last weekend I made some soap, which is an old fashioned lye soap. And it's just made out of rendered animal fat, um, caustic soda, essential oil, and water. So this is the end product. I haven't chopped it into little soap um, soaps yet, but I'll get around to that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did last weekend, this weekend. Um, here I've got some rendered lamb fat um, from the lamb we had here. I've just gotten it started in the microwave because as this gets um, cooler, it solidifies. So I just don't really want to scrape it out of there. Um, now I know how much is in this. For those of you who are actually interested in having a go at this yourself, um, soap making is really precise. So you do need to make sure you follow a recipe. Um, so I'll have some of that in um, the links below. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting the fat to go back to its pure liquid state. And that'll just take a few minutes really. I've just got it on a low heat setting. I don't want to boil the fat or anything spectacular like that. I'm just melting it back to its liquid state. Um, to get this rendered fat, all I did was I put cubed lamb fat, or you could do it with any kind of animal fat, into a slow cooker and just left it going until the fat rendered out and then I put that through a colander and with a piece of muslin over the top of it so that you've got an end liquid product that is going to look more like what we have now. So it's going to look all golden and yellow. This next bit is um, a little bit more dangerous because you are working with caustic soda which is a little bit um, volatile. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but if you just get a splash of this on you, it can be quite irritating. So I tend to you know, save my clothes from damage and wear gloves so I don't have itchy acid splashes. So this is caustic soda. I get this from Bunnings in the paint thinner section. Um, and sometimes you can find it in the cleaning section at Bunnings. Just make sure you're getting 100% um, pure sodium hydroxide. You don't want Drano, which is not 100% um, sodium hydroxide. It's got other additives in it. And when you're working with a soap recipe, you have to make sure you're 100% precise. First I've measured my sodium hydroxide and now I'm going to measure my water. I don't want to just add my measurement of my water into the sodium hydroxide because I might go over and then my ratio is off. So I measure them both separately first. just brought the exact measurement of the water and the caustic soda over to the um, exhaust fan because it does let off a gas and it's really toxic and potent. Um, do not breathe it in, you'll cough for ages. You can also just do this bit outside. All we're doing is combining the water and the acid. Just be careful when you're stirring this. You don't want any splashes, you don't want any sudden movements. Make sure your pets and your children aren't hanging out near this gas either. And as I said, you can just do this bit outside as well, um, just in the open air. Stand quite a ways back from it. You might be able to see this on camera, but there is a gas coming up this direction. Don't breathe that in. I have accidentally done that once before. It was really not fun. And you're just stirring it until you can't feel the granules anymore or you can't see them on the spoon. Uh, my fat's over here as well. It's come back down to a golden liquid colour. There's nothing more I need to do to that now, so I've just turned off the heat. And what I'm going to aim to do is get both this um, caustic soda water solution and, uh, and the oil to a similar temperature. And I'm just going to basically leave that there maybe about half an hour, 40 minutes. 
just so that they can both come down in temperature. You don't want to combine them when they're really hot. And this reaction here is actually causing an increase in heat. If you touch the side here, it'll be really quite hot. Okay, so it's probably been about 40, 45 minutes. Um, you can still see that the um, fat is in a liquid state. It's not turned back to solid. Um, your acid water solution has had time to cool down as well. This is sitting at about 38 degrees, give or take, for both of them. You just want to try and aim for somewhere around the um, uh, somewhere around that. If it's anything up like 50, too hot, and it's volatile. And that's Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. Immersion blender. It's just a cheapie from Big W. You don't need anything special, so long as you can put it through the dishwasher. No harm done. All right. I'm going to slowly combine the acid mix with the oil and use the immersion blender to get it going. I'm going to try and avoid splashes because it will still be acidic at this point. already changed consistency a little bit and what we're going to do is keep the immersion blender going until it reaches something called trace and that's much easier to show you than it is to explain <laughs> actually at trace just yet but you can really see the consistency is changing at this point I'm going to add my um, essential oil I chose eucalyptus for this one it's one of my favorites it's a nice clean scent I don't measure my eucalyptus but I'll leave some notes for you if you want to follow an exact measurement In fact, I would probably call that at trace now. Um, but I'm going to go just a little bit longer. So it's pretty much turning to the consistency of thick custard, what I call it. Um, you can see it's changed colour quite a bit since we first started as well. It is possible to over mix, to go beyond trace, and then you'll struggle to pour it into your mould. So I'm going to stop there, pour it into this. So I've just sprayed this with a little kitchen spray, nothing special, um, and that's just because it's not a genu genuine soap mould. You really do want it to have that pouring consistency so you can get it to sit on the surface quite evenly as well. All right. So you can leave it to sit flat like that, but I tend to do something in terms of I tend to do something in terms of decoration with it. Uh, with the last one I just used a, a knife to paddle across the top of it to make some swirls. Just a bit of aesthetics. And yeah, I'm just using a nice kitchen knife. Sorry. <laughs> hate that. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever sharp knife you've got, just use that. It's kind of like cutting fudge, I guess. This one has been sitting on the bench for, gosh, I don't know. A week generally you would make the effort to cut it within about 24 hours you don't want to cut it inside of 24 hours because it'll be a bit too sort of sappy a bit too soft it's quite tacky and um, the reason is it's not cured yet so I'm cutting it up so that then I can rest it 
on in an airy place to cure and you do that for about four or so weeks I'm just gonna leave mine out on the bench on a um, little trivet thing nothing special if you care about the look of them go ahead and buy molds I just don't bother with that This one is the one we did the other day um, and it's set. It's probably been a few, about three days since we did it. Usually you would take it out of the mold within about 24 hours and cut it up because you want to start getting some air circulation around your bars of soap. All right, there we go. One massive block of soap. So this is about as simple as it gets for a rendered fat soap. There are many different um, recipes online, different fat products that you can use from olive oil, coconut oil, that sort of thing. Um, just wanted to show you what we do for some of our basic soap from rendered fat. And uh, we'll leave the recipe and method below.